Welcome back, my friend. And we're continuing with the historical foundation of the development of the publishing work in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. We've been looking at the role of publishing ministry in the expansion of the church in the entire world. We've looked at the fulfillment of the vision, and now I want us to go through, you and I are going to journey through the worldwide publishing ministry to see how this work went clear around the world. The fulfillment of Ellen White's vision goes like this. The worldwide spread of God's message with the SDA literature playing a very important, played a very important role. The following are some countries first entered by the SDA message through literature in the World Church Division that they represent. So you will see now very clearly that, and we summarized it a few minutes earlier, in Switzerland, the work entered Switzerland in 1866, and uh, we know that Switzerland is in the Euro-Africa division. In New Zealand, which we said is off the southeastern coast of Australia, in the South Pacific, the work there, the publishing work, is what opened up the work in New Zealand in 1874. And in the UK, we have learned that in 1878, in the Trans-European Division, the publishing work started off there with literature or through the work of literature evangelists. And in South Africa, again, we're summarizing 1878 with William Hunt in the Southern Africa Indian Ocean Division. All of this, friend, is going back to that earlier vision. Ellen White saw in vision that the publications would go round the world. And this was a direct fulfillment from the earliest vision in 1849. You can see the number of years later, that is almost 30 years later, the advent is this message of Jesus' return. And the three angels' message was already reaching Africa Asia, the Middle East, and this, what we're now sharing, is giving you confirmation, evidence that God's word was fulfilled, God's word is being fulfilled, and God's word will be fulfilled. The whole world is going to be lightened up by with the three angels' message through the distribution of the printed page. Books, small books, pamphlets, leaflets, and other printed media. In Brazil, in the South American division, we know the work started off there in 1879. In Russia, um, the message reached that place in 1883. And in Hong Kong, over in Asia there, in the North Asia Pacific division, the message got there in 1888. We come back to West Africa in Ghana. We can see in 1888, this was the time when we had the, the wonderful uh, general conference session at which the great subjects of righteousness by faith were being discussed. In that same year, the Adventist message arrived in Ghana through the printed pray, uh, page. In Mexico, Mexico lies just south of the United States. Um, it is part of the Inter-American Division. The message got into Mexico in 1891. And in India, in the Southern Asia Division, 1893, the SDA message got there, friends, there was no stopping the three angels' message. 
in Alberta, Canada, over in the state of um, Alberta in the western western part of Canada. By 1895, the Seventh Day Adventist message reached the North American division. By then, we didn't have the divisions, but that, those are the those are the names of the divisions as we know them today. In the Philippines, uh, 1905. The message entered there through the printed page or through literature evangelists as well. In Kenya, which is over on the on the eastern coast of Africa, by 1906. Now again, think back from 1848. This is approximately 58 years later. The Seventh Day Adventist message, the Three Angels message, rather, was reaching parts of South Africa. East Africa, West Africa, North Africa. Indeed, Africa was being lightened up by the printed page. And now, in the following slides, we want to show you a list of some other countries where literature took a major role in opening up of the SDA work and the year in which the message entered. My friend, we need to learn from history. If we do not learn from history, we'll make the same mistakes that were, that were um, done or performed in the past. And the success that was met in the past, we, we can learn from that if we take those lessons and implement them. And when God gave the command to begin to print, he said it was going to be successful. If you and I follow the instruction of God, in sending out the books, sending out the pamphlets, selling some of them, giving some of them out, the message is going to reach the four corners of the world. And so let's look at these some of these other countries. There, the country of Erie, 1861. This is a year after the Seventh-day Adventist Church organized itself and came up with the name Seventh-day Adventist, but before they organized themselves uh, to have a general conference in 1863. In Switzerland, uh, north, you know, the northern part of Europe, by 1866, the message was beginning to reach the northern parts of Europe. Uh, in Norway, one of the Scandinavian countries, uh, just um, around... Um, um, just above uh, Denmark, um, you have Norway there. Eight, by 1874, the Seventh-day Adventist message reached Norway. And um, just next door to it, almost the same year, 1874, they also received the message. And all of these countries, my brother and my sister, received the message through either a literature evangelist going there to do canvassing work, working door to door or house to house, or friends sent publications and books and leaflets to individuals there. And that is how they came to know the precious message of the Sabbath and the second coming of Jesus and the investigative judgment and many other beautiful doctrines that the Lord had revealed to us. Then also in Holland there by 1876, they also received the Three Angels message. Pitcairn Island, um, so, um, off the 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 south uh, western coast of South America, um, in between South America, uh, South America and Australia, got Pitcairn Islands there. By 1876, they were receiving the message there. On our very own um, continent of Africa, Egypt received the Three Angels message through the printed page, 1877. Greece, just um, um, above there in the um, above the Mediterranean, you've got there in 1878, my friend. They received the three angels' message. USSR or Russia by 1880, the message was receiving their shores. The Guyana, Guyana is a little country on the northern tips of South America. They were receiving the message there in 1883. The message was going very, very fast. 
Australia. In 1885, they were receiving their message. We've mentioned it a number of times, so I won't stay, say too much about that. We'll move on to the next country, Honduras. Honduras also in South America. By 1888, they were also receiving the Three Angels message. Guam, also a little island, 1890. They received the message Jamaica. Interesting, Jamaica is an island country just beneath Cuba and uh, and um, uh, it's neighbored uh, you've got you've got Cuba and uh, and and um, the Dom- Dominican Republic on the one side and just below those islands or those countries then you've got Jamaica uh, they they received their message in 1890 so you've you've got you've got Cuba you've got uh, Haiti, and then you've got the Dominican Republic, and below it, in an island country of its own, Jamaica, 1890, they received their message. Latvia, Latvia is in north, um, the northern part of Europe, just below uh, Finland. They received their message in 1890. You've got Argentina. Argentina is in South America, just to the south of Brazil. By 1891, they were receiving this powerful message on their shores uh, through the work of literature, the publishing ministry. Uh, Nicaragua, also South America, 1892, they received their message as well. Uruguay, is also in South America, just below Paraguay, and then Uruguay and Brazil on top, and Argentina, almost like squ- uh, squeezed in between is Uruguay. They received their message 1892. My brother and my sister, the reason for this for this section of this presentation is to give you confidence that God's message was going to reach the four corners of the world as the early pioneers stepped out in faith and obeyed the vision and the voice of God. When you and I go out, when you and I verse ourselves in the history, it will give us confidence that God is going to finish off the work as he has said. And so the Falkland Islands, the Falkland Islands is a tiny islands off the southeastern coast of South America. They actually belong to to, to, to Britain, and they received the message in 1893. Then you've also got Trinidad, one of the island countries. By 1893, they were receiving the three angels' message, the SDA message entered. Next, Chile in South America. By 1894, Chile was receiving its message through the publications that were reaching its shore. Iceland uh, to the north uh, northeastern uh, part of uh, the continent of North America uh, and also, well, not just a little bit close to, to Greenland. So 1893, they were, 1897, I beg your pardon, 1897, they were receiving their message. Uh, Lebanon, they in the Middle East, 1897, They were blessed to be receiving the Seventh-day Adventist message according to God. And then Israel, 1898, Paraguay, as I had mentioned, in North, uh, in South America, um, they received their message in 1898. Singapore, over in the uh, in Asia, by 1900, Singapore was receiving the SDA message, the message of truth and hope. Uh, Tobago, 1900s, they received theirs also. Uh, It's also one of those little island countries between North and South America. Uh, Pakistan, Pakistan is neighboring India there by 1901. They were blessed to receive this precious truth. Bolivia, Bolivia is in the northern part of South America, um, North western part of South America. 1903, they were receiving their message. And then uh, Puerto Rico, 1903, they were receiving. So you can see that especially South America, the message was filtering down from the US to 
uh, to Mexico and then to the uh, South America and started going down the countries there because we've talked about pa- Paraguay, um, we've talked about Chile, we've talked about Bolivia, we've talked about Puerto Rico. All those are close to South, some of them are in South America and in the middle of, of South America. They were receiving the message as it was progressing on because the truth in Jesus is always marching on. And you and I can be part of that army that is going to finish uh, the work. Sierra Leone in West Africa, they received the message in 1903. This is in Africa. Ecuador, they received the message in 1904. Venezuela, also in South America, uh, 1907, they were receiving the SDA message there. Iraq, back over in the, in the Middle East, 1911, they were receiving the precious message um, through the publications being sent to them, through um, literature evangelists being sent to them. And Senegal, back in West Africa, 1952, on the continent of Africa, the message was bring, was being brought and the message was spreading like wildfire. In Gambia, also in the western part of Africa, um, by 1973, they were receiving their message. And so the SDA Encyclopedia, page 72, is telling us that the story of the beginning of the work of the SDA Church in many parts of the world is the story of the Cole Porter work preparing the way for the preacher. And in this case, we're referring to the living preacher. It continues to say, in all the South American countries except Peru, the SDA work began either through SDA publications being sent into the countries or through the work of Cole Potter's or literature evangelists. In other words, friends, all those countries that, that I mentioned in South America, Colombia, Bolivia, Chile, um, Brazil, Argentina, uh, Paraguay, Uruguay, all those countries except in the country of Peru, they all owe the beginning of the work to the printed page being sent through or through literature evangelists arriving on their borders or on their shores and beginning the work there. Don't, wouldn't you say amen to that? Well, I think some statistics will try and put context to what we're discussing now. In the 2017 statistical report, it says that from that humble beginning, the publishing ministry has circled the globe proclaiming the gospel just as Ellen G. White saw, Ellen G. White saw in her vision. By 2017, we had 61 publishing houses. We had books being published in 375 languages all over the world. And by 2017, we're having over 1 billion books being sold per year. Now, that's a great and tremendous accomplishment. By that year also, we had over 46,312 literature evangelists in the entire denomination, achieving over or close to 69,611 baptisms per year by all those literature evangelists. And that little beautiful book, Steps to Christ, has been printed in over 100 different languages. Won't you say amen to that, my brother and my sister? My friends, as I'm drawing to a close, ours is going to be a glorious heritage, a glorious close, not because of what we have done, but because we'll have participated 
in a program spearheaded by God, a program directed by God himself. And so I want to say to you that the heartwarming events showing the important role that the literature ministry played in introducing the three angels' message to the different countries is indeed a glorious heritage. Today, my brother and my sister, you can share in this glorious heritage. You can be part or you can take the three angels' message to your neighbors, to your friends, to your relatives that don't know this message so that they also may bask in that knowledge and in that light that may also be your glorious heritage. The literature work which our pioneer literature evangelists around the world started over a century ago is still occupying an important role in the evangelistic program of the church, especially in global mission. At present, the Southern Indian Ocean Publishing Department shows the following records. Now, this record is as, as of the end of December 2019. In this territory, we had over or approximately 1,868 full-time literature evangelists. Those that have dedicated themselves that go out and work over eight hours every day. They have put aside all other work. They do this work on a full-time basis, 1,668. With over 2,176 part-time literature evangelists. In the same division, by end of 2019, we had student literature evangelists numbering about 262 with 137 publishing leaders. That is including um, union publishing directors, conference publishing directors, uh, assistant publishing directors, as well as assistant publishing leaders, a total number of 136. Um, we don't have the statistics for the number of publishing houses or the number of literature seminaries, but needless to say that the work has been progressing. Friends, I would like you to look closely at this picture. This young man has stopped to canvas the old man who's looking intently into the book. He's giving a presentation and you know the experience, friends, as we do our, canvas, our canvassing. And so, friends, indeed it will be that with hearts and minds committed to God and his cause, our literature evangelists move forward in faith, laboring without reserve. In the, in the hot sun, in the uh, chilly mornings, in the evenings, they're out there delivering the message. Why? Because of the glorious heritage. Because of the glorious heritage. I'm reminding you, friends, the publishing ministry was established under, divine, under God's divine direction over 150 years ago. And it will continue to flourish under his supervision. May God bless you as you continue to sharpen your tools, to sharpen your knowledge, to sharpen your understanding, to broaden your views of literature ministry, and for you to know that this work has been ordained of God and it will be and will continue to be a success from the beginning. Let us pray. Our gracious Father, which art in the third heavens, thank you for the time that we took together with my fellow literature evangelists. Lord, the publishing work is the work that you would have us do for this time. May we accept the commission. May we go out and do it diligently because success has been guaranteed 
Because Father, when we obey, then heaven will come down and cooperate with us so that you'll have a great and wonderful harvest at the end of time. Bless each literature evangelist listening to this broadcast, Lord. And Lord, may you strengthen them in their faith and may you give them courage to go out there by day and by night, dear Lord, and in the highways and the byways and to spread the printed page, dear Lord, and to share the books and the leaflets and the pamphlets to prepare a great harvest for your kingdom. It's my desire and prayer in Jesus' name and for his name's sake, I pray. Amen.